Hello everyone and welcome to the St Martin's Morden online service. My name is Mark and I am the team vicar of St Martin's and if you are from the St Martin's church family then it's great to have you with us today. If you are local and watching us but don't really come along to St Martin's then it's great that you are joining us and you are very welcome. If you're watching us from further afield, then welcome to you too. Over our time together, we are going to play some Christian songs. We're going to pray some prayers. And amazingly, we're going to hear God's voice speaking to us. We're going to begin our time together by reading some words from our Bible reading today. The words will appear on the screen and if you like to join in with these words, then please do. Now to the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, the Only God, be honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that you are the King Eternal, that you are immortal, invisible. You are the only true and living God. And we thank you so much that through the Lord Jesus Christ, you invite us to come and praise you. And Father, we pray that over our time together now, that by your spirit, you'd help us to praise you, that you'd help us to see you as the one true living God. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, in those words uh, from 1 Timothy, Paul praises God because he is the one true God. And we're now going to have an opportunity to praise this God in our opening hymn. It's the hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. As this hymn plays, please feel free to sing along or to sit and to listen to the words.
The good news of the Christian faith is that God loves us and longs for a relationship with us. The way we get God's love is not by doing things for him, but by trusting in Jesus to save us. And we're now going to have an opportunity to express our trust in Jesus. Some words will appear on the screen. And if you'd like to pray this prayer, then please do join in. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from every kind of wrong. We pray. Almighty God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with all our heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. Have mercy upon us. Cleanse us from our sins and help us to overcome our faults through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm now going to read some words from our Bible reading today. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners. In those words we are reminded that Jesus came into this world to save people who have done wrong. Which means if we are trusting in Jesus we can be assured of God's forgiveness and love. And we're now going to play a song that speaks to us of the amazing love of God. It's the song, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. As this song plays, please feel free to sing along or to sit and to listen to the music. After this song has played, Claire, who is a member of the St. Martin's Church family, will read God's word for us. Stay. 
should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Good morning, St Martins. The reading this morning is taken from 1 Timothy chapter 1, beginning at verse 8. We know that the law is good if one uses it properly. We also know that the law is made not for the righteous, but for lawbreakers and rebels, the ungodly and sinful, the unholy and irreligious, for those who kill their fathers or mothers, for murderers, for the sexually immoral, and for whatever else is contrary to the sound doctrine that conforms to the gospel concerning the glory of the blessed God which he entrusted to me. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has given me strength that he considered me trustworthy appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord has poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. Some words from Psalm 119. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I gain understanding from your word, therefore I hate every wrong path. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that your words are sweet. That your words are sweeter than honey. Because they speak to us of your amazing love for us. We thank you that your word gives us understanding. Please now, by your spirit, would you help us to see how sweet your love is for us and to gain understanding. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. During the 1800s, a group of American ministers visited England, prompted by a desire to hear some of the celebrated preachers of their day. On one Sunday morning, they attended the City Temple Church, where Dr Joseph Parker was the minister. Some 2,000 people filled the building, and Parker's forceful personality dominated the service. His voice was commanding his language descriptive, his imagination lively, and his manner animated. The sermon was biblical, biblical, and the congregation hung on every word. And the Americans came away saying that Joseph Parker was an amazing preacher. That evening they went to hear Charles Spurgeon speak at the Metropolitan Tabernacle. The building was much larger and the congregation was twice the size. Spurgeon's voice was much more expressive and moving. His speech was strikingly superior. But they soon forgot all about the great building, the immense congregation and his amazing voice. They even overlooked their intention to compare the two preachers 
And when they left the service, they found themselves saying to one another, what an amazing saviour Jesus is. And as we look at this passage from 1 Timothy, we see Paul, the writer of this letter to Timothy, is doing a similar thing. He wants people to see how amazing Jesus is. And the way he does this is by reminding people of Jesus' saving work. And the first thing that Paul wants people to see about Jesus' saving work is this. God's law exposes our sin. God's law exposes our sin. Paul begins in verse 8. We know that the law is good if one uses it properly. There are lots of things in life that can be used rightly or wrongly. So take a fire extinguisher. A fire extinguisher is a good thing if it's being used to put out a fire. However, if it's not being used to put out a fire, then it can be a bad thing. So if it's being used to soak somebody on a boy's night out, then that is not a proper use of a fire extinguisher. And Paul says the same is true for God's law. The law that Paul is speaking about here is the Ten Commandments, which were given by God to Moses. And Paul says God's law can be used rightly and wrongly. If it's used rightly, then it's a good thing. If it's used wrongly, then it's not a good thing. And what was happening in Paul's day was that there were some false teachers in the church who were using God's law wrongly. How were these false teachers misusing God's law? Well, we're not explicitly told, but from the clues we have in the letter, we can build up a picture. In chapter 1, verse 4, we're told that these false teachers were promoting myths, family trees and controversy. So rather than being promoters of the truth, they were promoting unhelpful speculation. In chapter 4, verse 3, we're told that they were forbidding people from eating certain foods and getting married. So it seems that these false teachers were telling people that you need to do this and that to be right with God. This seems to suggest that they were all about what we do and not about what Jesus has done for us. At the end of the letter, in chapter 6, verse 20, they are described as people who are involved in godless chatter, which they call knowledge. So they seem to be a people who were all about knowledge based not on the truths of Jesus saving work, but based on ungodly and unhelpful talk. And from this we can conclude that these false teachers were probably using the law of God to justify their own behaviour and attitudes and teaching. They were saying things like, look at us, we have all these family trees, we have the law, we're the clever ones, listen to us, we're not like those people over there, we are the ones who are right with God. And if you want to be right with God, then you need to spe uh, follow our special rules. So far from the saving work of Jesus being upheld, these false teachers were promoting themselves. They were using God's law wrongly. They were using it to promote themselves. So Paul seeks uh, to correct them on this. So how is God's law to be used properly? Well Paul highlights one way for us in verse 9 and that is it exposes people's sin. Paul says in verse 9 we also know that the law is not made for the righteous but for the lawbreakers and rebels, the ungodly and the sinful, the unholy and the irreligious. Here Paul says that God's law is not for those who think they are righteous, but for those who are sinners. 
How is, God law, how is God's law for sinners? Well, God's law exposes our sin. It shows us God's perfect standards of how we are to love and to live. And it shows us that we are rebels and lawbreakers because none of us can meet God's perfect standards. And just in case we're in danger of thinking that we are exempt in any way, Paul goes on to show us that God's law is not limited to one or two issues in life, but to the whole of life. So in verses 9 and 10, he gives us a whole list of examples of ways in which people break God's law. We don't have time to go through each one, but let's just take the example of lying. All of us at one time or another have told somebody a lie. And therefore, as a result, Paul says we are exposed as lawbreakers and rebels. We are exposed as sinners. And this is true for everyone. It doesn't matter who we are or how good we think we are. None of us have fully met the perfect standard of God's law. We're all lawbreakers, all rebels, all sinners. And understanding this will guard us against two temptations. Firstly, the temptation of pride. If you and I think we've kept all the rules, then this will lead to us being proud of ourselves and our own achievement. This pride will then belittle the saving work of Jesus because we will think, I don't need Jesus to save me. However, if we've understood God's law rightly, then we will see that there is no place for pride in a Christian faith because none of us can perfectly keep God's law and all of us need Jesus to save us. Second temptation is the temptation to despair. Some of us will be very, very aware that we do not keep God's law. This awareness may lead us to feel rubbish about our lives. We might think that because we keep messing up, God doesn't like us. And again, this attitude belittles the saving work of Jesus. Because we will think that our sin is so big that even Jesus cannot save us from it. And this couldn't be further from the truth. The law of God is not there to make us feel proud or to make us feel rubbish about ourselves. It's there to show us that we are sinners who need saving and that Jesus is the only one who can save us. And this is the second thing Paul reminds this church about and that is Jesus saves sinners Jesus saves sinners John Newton was a famous Anglican vicar in the 1700s he was a slave trader who amazingly became a Christian in 1748 he was of course famous for writing the great classic hymn Amazing Grace towards the end of his life when he was nearing his death, he said these words. My memory is nearly gone, but I remember two things. That I am a great sinner and that Christ is a great saviour. And these two themes are interwoven in verses 12 to 17. Paul looks at his own life. And says, I am a great sinner, but Jesus is a great saviour. So listen to how Paul describes himself in these verses. In verse 13, he describes himself as a blasphemer, a persecutor, a violent man. He says he was ignorant and unbelieving about God and his ways. In verses 15 and 16, he goes on to say that he was the worst of sinners. So the picture of Paul that we have here is one 
of an unbelieving, foul-mouthed bully. He was literally the lowest of the low. Yet amazingly, in verse 12, he tells us that he was appointed to be a, sa a servant of Jesus. How did he get this job? Well, listen to what he says in verse 15. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. Here we see Paul didn't become a servant of Jesus because he had obeyed God's law, but he became a servant of Jesus because Jesus came to save a sinner like him. And in this we see the amazing mercy and grace of God. In verses 13 and 15 and 16, Paul speaks of God's mercy and grace. This mercy and grace was God's undeserved love being shown to Paul. As a sinner, Paul knew that all he deserved from God was his judgment upon him. But he knew that God in his love sent Jesus to save him. Jesus did this when he died on the cross, taking a judgment of God upon himself so that Paul could be forgiven. And like Paul, we too do not deserve God's love. Like Paul, we are all sinners and all we deserve from God is his judgment upon us. But amazingly, God in his love sent Jesus to save us. And notice that Paul says this mercy, this grace, was poured out on him abundantly. There was no holding back. God literally showered him with his love and his compassion. I was trying to picture what this would look like, and the best I could come up with was this. Imagine what it would be like pouring the oceans of the world into a child's beach bucket. Imagine the overflow there would be if you were able to do that. It would be immense. It would be immeasurable. It would be unstoppable. And that is a small picture of the love God pours out onto sinners like Paul and like you and me today. And isn't that extraordinary? And amazingly, it doesn't stop there because Paul has been shown this grace, this mercy, this love so that Jesus' amazing patience can be seen. In verse 16, Paul says, but for this very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who believe in him and receive eternal life. Now, some of us can be quite impatient, can't we? We get stuck in a supermarket queue uh, and we get fed up because we've got somewhere else to be. And we start getting impatient with the people in front of us. We start getting impatient uh, with the people behind the tills. But thankfully, Jesus is not like that. His patience never runs out. He never gets fed up with us. And do you notice the reason why Paul was shown this undeserved mercy, grace and patience? Well, at the end of verse 16, he says that it was so he could be an example for other sinners of who could be saved. And Paul's point is, if Jesus can save a great sinner like Paul, then he can save other great sinners too. So if you're yet to trust in Jesus to save you, why not come to him today and admit you are a sinner and ask Jesus to save you? And once you have done that, and if you have already done that, then the right response to make to God is to praise him. In verse 17, 
the saving work of Jesus causes Paul to break out into wonderful praise. So listen to what he says. Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only gods be honour and glory forever and ever. Amen. And we need to feel this. I wonder what causes you to be amazed. I wonder what causes you to break out in praise. A beautiful view, a pretty garden, a child's picture, a piece of art, a great sporting achievement, a job well done. As great and as worthy of praise those things are, far greater is the love of God for sinners like you and me. And if you and I have understood rightly the depths of God's love for us, then you and I will want to praise him and thank him and honour him and live for him with the whole of our lives. So today, whoever we are, whatever we've done, however you and I might feel, let's praise God for his amazing love for us. Let's praise God for his mercy, his grace, his patience. Let's praise God that even though you and I have broken God's law and deserve his judgment, he has wonderfully saved us through the death and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your amazing love, mercy, grace and patience. We thank you that even though we cannot keep your law, you still love us and you sent Jesus to save us. Please help us today to trust in him and to see the depths of your love for us so that we would praise you. For we ask this in his name. Amen. If you'd like to know more about the amazing love of God shown to us in Jesus, if you'd like to find out how Christians can have hope in life and death, we're going to be running a video-based discussion group on Zoom, which will look into the life of Jesus. The group will start on Thursday, the 9th of July at 7.45pm, and if you'd like more information about that, then please do get in touch with me and you will find the details to do so in the description below. We're now going to respond to God's word by playing that great hymn, Amazing Grace. As this hymn plays, please feel free to sing along or to sit and to listen to the words of music as it plays. After this, Josie, who is a member of the St Martin's Church family, will lead us in a time of prayer. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first Yes. 
so hard and continue to do their best to help us all and keep us safe, especially for the healthcare workers who have been continually looking after and caring for us. We also thank you for our other emergency services, such as the police, who have been keeping us safe. Furthermore, we thank you for the teachers who have continued to help us with our education and look after so many of us. We're also grateful to be able to spend more time with family and friends especially those who have constantly been there to keep our spirits up. As the restrictions are easing, we pray that people act responsibly. We pray for all the school children who have been struggling over the past few months and that you, have, and that you will be with them as they face the, the uncertain future. We especially ask that you will help those who are due to start at new schools as they will be somewhere that new and they haven't had a chance to get used to the surroundings. Please help all those who are currently ill or struggling with health in any way and be there for the people who feel alone and have nobody to turn to. As we continue to move forwards, please help us to remember, to remember all that we have learned about caring for each other and please help us not to forget all the important people and the things that we have unearthed. We are sorry if we do forget and are so grateful that even though we do, you still love us and sent Jesus to die for us so that we can have eternity with you. Please help us to remember and to try to try and continue to love everyone as you would. We ask this in your name. Amen. I'll now lead you in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, today we have wonderfully been reminded of God's love for us. And our final hymn gives us an opportunity to praise God once again for that love. It's the great hymn, To God Be The Glory. As this hymn plays, please feel free to sing along or to sit and to listen to the music as it plays.
hath taught us great things he hath done and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder our rapture when Jesus we see praise the Lord praise the Lord Well, we've now come to the end of our time together. If you're part of St. Martin's Church family, we're going to be holding an online meetup via Zoom at 11.30 today. So if you're watching this at 10.30, uh, why not go and get yourself a drink? And then at 11.30, join us on Zoom for a time of saying hello. It'd be wonderful to see you. Next week, we'll be back with another online service at 10.30. So please do join us then if you're able to. If you'd like to know more about the Christian faith, then please do visit our website or our Facebook page. And if you'd like to get in contact with me about that video-based discussion group, then please email me for the details. In the meantime, please be assured of my love and prayers for you all. Let's have a final prayer of blessing. Now to the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, the only God be honour and glory for ever and ever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen.